So what do you gather from these kind of, are they fact-finding missions? What do you look, what do you yeah, look I mean, at them as? We're here uh, today in, in Richmond talking to small business people, seeing how things are going. Um, I think the number one issue that I can tell on the minds of most people that I speak to is, when are we going to see a better economy? When are things going to look up? And we know that small businesses are the backbone of our economy, so that's why we're here, trying to understand what, what it looks like to a small business person. Buster Wright here at Living Market says he's actually expanding, and he's going to have a new location uh, out on Richfield Parkway uh, in August uh, in the far west end here. So that's promising to me. Uh, we talked to Dick Folks uh, from Peter Blair that's a men's shop here in Living Grove. Uh, he says business is really good. And I love to hear stories like that. We talked to some others and say, look, we've got challenges. It's hard to stay in business right now. Uh, we got health care cost concerns, um, and frankly, it's not enough business. And so, again, this we're, we're trying to get a sense for what small business people are looking at right and now. And what are they attributing? The, you know, obviously, there's an expansion here. You said things are going well at Peter Blair. What's the difference for them and maybe some other outfits that aren't succeeding? Why are they able to succeed in this tough economy? Well, I, again, I think it, it may have to do with the product mix. Uh, everyone has to buy some clothes. Uh, you know, everybody's got to buy some food. Um, and it may have to do with, um, you know, just a built-in clientele. Some of these businesses have been around for decades. Uh, but what I'm also hearing, even from those that are doing good, it's still a fight with the government. It still seems like the government's not on your side. And what I'm hearing is they want to see a partner, both in Richmond and in Washington, not an adversary. And so what that means to me is... Let, let's be about a Small Business Protection Act. Let's go about saying no more regulations until this economy gets going again, save for health and emergency. And that's the kind of thing we'll be working on this summer in Washington. And do, what about uh, the gridlock? Does that concern them at all? That uh, it seems that you have a hard time maybe coming to, to agreement with the president on some of these you, issues, you know, the uncertainty? Or? You know, I've asked that, but <laughs> it, it's almost as if that is Washington speak. Yeah. Uh, and what they're concerned about is making sure customers come in the door. What they're concerned about is making sure they have their vendors and their pricing right. Uh, so that they can watch the bottom line at the end of each month. And I think that as a small business person, I know that they would expect their government to do that and no less. And that's what's very frustrating is that Washington doesn't seem to be living by the same rules here, which is you can't spend money you don't have, and you got to go ahead and resolve things so that we can see a growing nation again of small businesses. You know, driving through this area, in fact, I've seen quite a few of your signs up, and it talks about June 12th which is not November, obviously. You have a primary here in a week or so. Are you concerned at all about that? Are you trying to make sure people know that they need to get out on the polls um, next well, Tuesday? Or I, I think, you know, everyone should be taking elections seriously. I mean, this is our God-given gift as citizens of America. we got to go speak out and go to the polls. Um, and, you know, we don't take anything for granted. I mean, you know, we feel uh, very, very confident taking our message of, of growth and small businesses uh, and the fact that number one concern is getting this economy back on track to the voters of the 7th District. And you have a Tea Party candidate that's against you. Are, are you concerned at all with maybe uh, the lack of support in that area, or do you think your message uh, resonates with that? Group? Well, again, I mean, if you if you think about what the acronym of Tea Party is, it's taxed enough already. Uh, and I feel very strongly that Washington does not have uh, a, a revenue problem. It has a spending problem. Uh, we've got to get the spending straight. That's what we've been trying to do. Unfortunately, you know, it's policies that come out of the White House uh, and uh, those being promulgated and pushed by the Senate it just haven't allowed sort of a turn to sense of confidence. Uh, we can see businesses grow if we just allow them to do it and stop loading on more regulations. Do you feel any need to reach out to that group, though, specifically? Or do you think that, you, you know, that you done a sufficient job of that. Well, we, we, are, we are trying to do everything we can to uh, be accessible and to listen to the voters of this district as to what their concerns are. And um, I don't care if you're on the left side of the philosophical spectrum or the right or somewhere in between. What I continue to hear is, please get this economy growing again. Please, Washington, stop being the problem. You know, we, we want to see small businesses grow again and so our families can look to more optimistic future. Congressman, yeah, I'm sorry. There's, there's a Senate bill. Oh, you don't. You can yeah, ask yeah. one question. We're the, gonna have to go.
there's a Senate bill coming forward, uh, patroned by uh, Mark Warner and with a couple of Republicans and uh, I believe another Democrat that's uh, focusing on startup businesses. And I know that there's, they, t they touch a couple of immigration issues there, uh, expanding visas for uh, people who uh, get degrees in STEM areas. Um, I know this is something that they've, they've made a big push for last week. Are there issues of common ground there, and is there, or do you have concerns? Well, well first of all, it is a follow-up to the Jobs Act uh, that was signed into law that we were uh, fortunate enough to see go into law, which is aimed directly at the notion that America should be a startup nation again. Uh, we've seen a, de a decline by 23 percent over the last three years of small business startups. We need to arrest that trend and so that businesses can have more confidence again. Uh, from what I know about the Startup uh, Act 2.0 is it's aimed at small businesses. Uh, it's aimed at, at helping entrepreneurs have the confidence again that they can grow in America. Um, and if you look at the um, House Republican uh, uh, jobs agenda, we have in there um, a, a plank which says we ought to be the destination for the world's best and brightest people. We know we're a country that's based upon uh, waves of immigrants coming here over the centuries, making us what we are today. We are absolutely for promoting legal immigration, um, and that is encouraging those uh, who want to come here to create value, invest, um, you know, happen to uh, bring about capital formation and business formation. That's what makes America, and that's what we're for. So I haven't looked at the actual specifics of the bill, but there's a lot of commonality right now.